Oh my god, it is too late in the day to do this. Hi everybody, welcome to episode 2 of Week of Witchblade, comic book chair edition. Oh fuck, those should be reversed. Anyway, Witchblade Rebirth Volume 2. Let's check that shit out. I am exhausted. Okay, Witchblade Volume 2 can be segmented into two arcs, which I'll refer to as the Fairy Arc and the Dark Scion Arc. In the Fairy Arc, Sarah Pizzini is trapped in the world of Fairy after going after the Black Market Magic Ring. That's as dumb as it sounds, but... Fairy itself, and the plot going into Fairy, is actually quite nice. In it, Sarah meets a former Witchblade wielder, she sees some magical creatures, and she learns a great lesson about responsibility. The Dark Scion arc involves Sarah finding yet another perversion of the 13 artifacts. Yeah, there are 13 of them, I'm not gonna go into detail, just the important ones in this story are the spear, the darkness, and the Witchblade. We meet the perversion of the spear, aka Hipster Antichrist, and she learns a lesson of consequence. There's more to it, I just don't want to spoil it for you good people who should really check out this book. That's a synopsis. Characters! Sarah Pizzini's back, and she has completely thrown herself into her role as the Witchblade, shirking her responsibilities as a private eye. She is still yet to find balance in her own life, and it will come to bite her on the ass. Her problem in this book is that she's too much Witchblade, not enough detective. Sarah Pizzini in the old comics was way more detective. And this is not a compliment, this is what the plot is about. Kane's back, and he has enhanced his magical act by rubbing dark magic dirt over his body. He really wanted that magic, and he's cheating to get it. He's flirting with Sarah, further the goals of Grandfather. So, he's gonna break her heart. Then again, he's a magician, so she should have seen this coming. Jane's back, as well, for a little bit. She's, um, there in the beginning, there at the very end of the book. She doesn't do much. However, she is a big part of the beginning story in which she gets Sarah to help her brother, who is having a ghost problem. The story itself has nothing to do with the plot at hand, but it is a real good story. As I was saying before, in the fairy arc, we have... Katarina Goldleaf, at least I think that's how you spell it, G-O-D-L-I-F-F-F-E, -F -F -E. Goldleaf. She is the medieval witch blade, around the same time as medieval spawn. Currently, um, she's living in fairy. She earned the right to live there after she saved them with medieval spawn. She's a sheriff of a large city. She's, she was once a, uh, gallant knight. She is now a horned up alcoholic who has become greatly disillusioned with her life after the witch blade rejected her. Sees Sarah as a rival of which to earn back the Witchblade. The uh, antagonist of the fairy arc is Mulrani, a gnome who's a prick. He's a businessman and the orchestrator of the Black Ma black Market Magic Ring. He's, he's violent, bloodthirsty, and wishes to kill off the Shadow Elf Queen who stands in his way of profit. You see, fairy has this... Uh, trade system in which they give earth magic and we give them technology and it turns out that it's a lot easier to kill a dragon with a rocket launcher than it is to kill it with spells because it lives in a world used to spells dragon don't know what a rocket launcher is it's mentioned in the book but is never shown which is a shame really we have our next antagonist alisa the dark scion where the flesh is the perversion of the witchblade the dirt is the perversion of the darkness. Elisa is the perversion of the spear, another artifact. The spear is Christ in the Witchblade universe. And Christ is a sexy woman, as Witchblade must have things be. Anyway, she's the Antichrist, and like any good Antichrist, she has the power to corrupt the hearts of men and women and bend them to her will. She is also garishly ironic because of course a hipster would be Antichrist. I'm not against this choice, I just think it's a little on the nose there. I know it sounds like I'm bitching, but I honestly love this book. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, actually, yeah, speaking of likes, I like how Fairy suffers from the same pollution problems Earth does from the influx of industrial technology. Yeah, smog is fucking up the world of Fairy. Having bullets and guns are really fucking up the order of things because while a guy can, it takes a while for him to enchant a spell, it only takes a couple moments to load a gun and glock a motherfucker. I also like Fairy's fascination with Earth tech. It's always cute to see the mundane become exotic. And once again, I want to give props to Tim Seeley, who takes this cliched idea and makes it interesting. Dislikes! Like I said, Hipster Antichrist is, while Elisa is a well-written character, just a little on the nose. I get it. You don't like hipsters. 
I don't like them either. Also, black market magic trade work. How do you physically sell magic? Why do you need to trade magic when you can go to a dead area of Chicago and rub magical dirt all over your body that gives you magic powers? You know, like this, this particular thing doesn't seem to work. And in the book, they destroy the access to fairy and earth spoilers. So even the writer was like, no way, this is dumb. I guess you could sell artifacts, but then again, it's, this takes to like black market magic idea is a sweater that is just one thread away from unraveling. Like, it's, it seems like a cool idea, but I don't think it really works in practice. And I think Tim Seeley figured this out as well. My verdict of this book, despite my incessant bitching, is a four out of five must read. Where volume one of Witchblade Rebirth was about overcoming impotence and accepting who you are, Witchblade Rebirth volume two is about responsibility and its consequences. Even good consequences, like, may turn out to be the wrong thing. Maybe bad choices are the right thing, maybe Maybe bad choices are the good thing. What matters is you made that choice. Once again, Diego Bernard brings it home with the art and Tim Seeley fucking knocks it out of the park with writing. And it continues this great story of perversion of Witchblade artifacts and I want to see where this goes. Too bad I've already read part three and we will talk about that more next time on the comic book chair. Week of Witchblade! Good night, y'all.